What's up, everybody? This is Random Friday. I'm Darnisha. And I'm Shayna. Today we're going to talk to you about a film made by UCCP. This film was made about police brutality on social media and its effect on youth. Roll the clip. We got pulled Damn. over on Larpener. I told him not to reach for it. I told him to get his hand out. He had, you told him to get his ID, sir, and his driver's license. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. I'm minding my business, officer. I'm minding my business. Please just leave me alone. I told you the last time, please just leave me alone. Stay with me. We got pulled over for a busted tail light in the back. Did you see what he was wearing? Yeah, a dark hoodie, like a gray hoodie, and... Are you following him? Yeah. Okay, we don't need you to do that. Exit now! Keep him up! Keep him up! Face Where's my daughter? You got my daughter? Face away from me and walk back. So the police said, please back up. And then they started shooting. And then the police just took me. Um, I clicked on the video, not really knowing what it was. It was um, a little boy, he was in the park, and he had a, a BB gun in his hand. I actually didn't see a BB gun, I thought he was just like pointing his fingers. Um, a police patrol car came up and... He was shot to death by a rookie police officer who says that he thought it was real. I was really sad, I was actually um, crying. I went to my mom and you know, I was asking her, hey, where's Malachi? That's my little brother. He was eight at the time. And uh, she's like, I just sent him to the park. So I actually ran to the park to go get him, make sure he's like, okay. He asked me like, what, what am I doing here? And you know, I just told him like, you know, you gotta be careful. Just like be mindful of what you're doing. You have people like me, a, a black teenage male, and I'm seeing these images and I'm like, is this like what's gonna happen to me? Like, I feel disturbed because it touches my heart how people that look like me or in my com in, in my community are treated. When it comes to these instances, it kind of has an effect on not only me but most of the black male community because we're seeing it as that could be us one day. We could be just driving around in our car, pulled over and then shot dead just for following the law that we've been, to that we've been told and shown to do. It makes me feel like people will only see me as that stereotype, as like, it's just another black male who he's doing all this stuff and he deserves to get shot. It's traumatizing. Um, you know, some young kids and even older individuals who, who've experienced this type of violence, who have witnessed this type of violence um, on, on multiple occasions, and now it's being thrust in their face um, on an almost daily basis. It's not only the fact that media are putting out the police brutality, it's also when they do reality TV shows. And it's, it's we've been put in situations where we always look like we're the bad guys. They don't tell me about the cops' history, but they'll tell me about the victim's history. They'll tell me, oh, on July 22nd in 2002, he stole a candy bar. Like, they'll go that in depth. How does your school address the police violence you are seeing? Before I moved to Pennsylvania, I used to go to school in Jersey, and my school never actually talked about one case at all. Yeah, so. That was like kind of blinded. There's a lot of things that we don't talk about, but uh, that was actually blinded um, until I actually moved to Philadelphia. And then you started seeing more students being involved with like, you know, seeing people posting and sharing about it and teachers in school actually being involved with, you know, uh, police brutality and all that. The teaching of black history, the studying of black history is, is graphic. Just, just going through the topics, you're talking about enslavement. Um, you're talking about being cramped on slave ships that seem small because you're surrounded by hundreds of other people 
who had also been kidnapped in similar circumstances as yourself. You're talking about people being maimed. You're talking about lynchings, murders. You're, you're talking about rape. You're talking about so much when, when talking about black history that you can't help but be graphic 75% of the time. How do you interact with media representations of police violence? I get most of my resources about police brutality from social media. I mainly get it from Instagram. I see mainly videos and pictures, and then I go on the internet and do deeper research on the issue. After Trayvon Martin, after all of the stories that came out afterwards, and all of the stories of 2016, I did find myself saying, like, this is too much. I can no longer take it, because me personally, my emotional state was very, like, on edge, like on the edge of like breaking. And so I was like, I can't take it anymore. I'm gonna cut myself off. And so I turned off all my social media. I, I kind of know what's going on, but I really don't want to face the reality of, you know, this is going on and I see it, but I don't really want to graphically see the video because it just, it doesn't make me feel better. I mean, it makes me know like what's going on, but it doesn't make me feel any better that it is happening. Since it's portrayed so much, I just kind of think, oh, it's just another person. Sometimes, like, it's just another person. Like, it matters, but it's just like, they gonna keep, police keep doing it, so it's just like, why, like, pay attention to it? You know, I'm concerned that people are being desensitized to it. They're just saying, oh, just another shooting, um, and they're not really acknowledging, um, they're not really acknowledging that it's, it's a huge problem that needs to be addressed. They're just sort of taking part in in the clickbaiting that occurs with these images. So if you're just sharing and just sharing, what's actually you know, going to happen? Like, what are you actually going to do except for sharing? It's, you're spreading the word, yes, but you're really not really, you're not really doing anything. My concerns are that um, on social media, same, same forum, um, people aren't going beyond simply looking at an image and sharing an image, and you know, that they're not, you know, Get, taking part in the movement that's, that, uh, that they're being called to. What are some positive outcomes of sharing images of police violence? It gives a, like, people a chance to see what's really going on. These images are helpful because it makes people angry and they want to take action and it shows how police brutality is still real today. I think people have the right to actually see the truth of what is happening. Um, a warning would be nice if they have like a warning on any social media website like you know this is like really graphic. I know some of them do but not all of them. You can just click on a video and it just started playing. Social media is interesting in that it democratizes information. You know everyone can everyone has access to it and so people who are across the country who may not catch wind of a local situation they now can catch wind of it and they can find ways to to take part in this this budding movement that's taking place, um, and that's 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 invaluable. That's extremely important. It could inspire people to become to not be like complicit about what's going on. For the non for people who really don't believe in police brutality, you know, they read about it and they say, oh, the two sides of the story, and they don't know this is just one side, it's one side. So just seeing the video. It's not, just, um, it's not just reading an article that can be biased. So what would be your message to the consumers of these images, particularly young people? I would say educate yourself. I would say go beyond simply that image. Understand the context in which that image is being created. Understand that this image um, is part of a long history of, of violence against black bodies and that you know, we alter and we, we must, we must. If you're coming across this, we must view it as an opportunity to, to educate those who may not be aware of it. Um, using that image if you have to, but discussing the, the circumstances behind not just that particular incident, but the larger context, which is injustice in, in the American justice system. No justice, no peace, no racism.
Now we have an interview with FLC student Sarita Williams about her internship with POWER. My name is Sarita Williams. Um, I go to Franklin Learning Center High School. I'm a junior. I joined POWER when I was a sophomore because because my biology teacher, Ms. Kella, told me about it and when she described what we would be doing, I was interested. She told us that it was youth-led and it was a social justice internship. When we worked on this video, we had more than one idea. Um, we narrowed it down to the coverage of police brutality because usually when people cover police media, it's telling people what police brutality is is not telling how it would affect somebody so I feel like our video took a different aspect of police brutality and said how it makes us feel like the community that it targets how it makes us feel when it's portrayed on the media so the process was different all right so to wrap this all up to everyone, everywhere no matter what color you are black white brown purple yellow stay woke Stay woke, know your rights, and know what's going on around you. Exactly. Just stay safe wherever you are, whatever you're doing. And until next time, I'm Darnisha. And I'm Shayna. We're with Random Friday. See you next time.